not everybody we hire has already been working in space. But the person who comes to work for us should ideally have a certain passion for space because this is a common characteristic that you find throughout this organization, the passion for space. Aerospace engineers are only one, one group of professionals that we hire at ESA. We hire a lot of electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, uh, software engineers, but also uh, physicists. And uh, then there are also a number of, of disciplines that we hire at ESA that are outside of the technical or, or scientific area, uh, like um, people with a, a background in business administration or economics, law, uh, communications. If you're not yet finished with your studies, so you're, you're in university but you're not yet finished with your studies, it's possible to do an internship at ESA. If you have just concluded your studies and you're looking for your first professional experience in the sp space domain, uh, we have the Young Graduate Trainee Scheme. Uh, if you have completed a doctorate and you're thinking about a postdoctoral research fellowship, uh, we have postdoctoral research fellowships. And then, of course, um, last but certainly not least, uh, we also have the direct entry options for experienced professionals. People have already been uh, working in, in their, their field of activity for three, four, five years, ten years. I mean, it really depends on the kind of position uh, that um, we're, we're advertising. We tend to have a, a very much a, a, an engineering um, approach in the way that we recruit at ESA as well, uh, which means that there are certain specifications that are laid down in this case in the vacancy notice. And so what we're hoping to see is, uh, in, in the applications that we receive, is a large level of alignment between what we're asking for in the vacancy notice and what we then see in the application. So the, the thing really to do is to um, go that route to wait until the right vacancy notice comes out and then to apply. ESA has a really good size. It, on, on the one hand, it's large enough to have this, this broad range of, of activities, of space projects, of space missions. Um, we're, we're not a, a single mission organization. We, we have a range. We have the different program areas that we develop missions in. On the other hand, ESA is small enough that no matter where you work in the organization, you're still in contact with the space business that we are in. In, in some large companies, uh, you might be in a company, working for a company that, that um, actually uh, is in the line of work that you're interested in, but the department or the section that you're working for uh, might not really be in contact with the core business. That's not the case with us. Everybody in our organization is in contact with the core business, and that makes it really attractive. ESA today has 19 member states, and it also has a, a cooperation agreement uh, with uh, Canada, and we are very focused on making sure that we have employees from all of those countries working for the European Space Agency. Uh, we are looking for people with uh, certain soft skills. And uh, so uh, communications, uh, communication skills are extremely important. Um, then also, if you consider the sort of work that we do here, uh, none of the projects that we do can be done by one person alone. It always takes a team effort. So because it always takes a team effort, obviously we're looking for people who have strong team work skills. ESA also has a strong orientation towards a, a, a good, healthy work-life balance. Uh, the organization does a lot for not only the staff member, but also for the families of staff members. So if, if somebody uh, decides to leave their home country and, and come to work for ESA, uh, then they, they really uh, come into a, a system, a network, 
um, an organization uh, that looks after its, its staff. I, I've been with ESA for 20 years now, and I, I can uh, truly say that not a year has gone by uh, in which I have not been impressed uh, with the work uh, that is done by our scientists and our engineers. And uh, to, to come in from a completely different background and to be able to operationalize that background, and in my case uh, I have a general business uh, background, uh, a general management background, I, I focused on human resources, uh, to be able to use that and to use that skill and that background to support uh, the, the effort that this organization is making in the space domain is something that I find um, incredibly gratifying. Mm -hmm.